How's it going, friends? Reckless Yugi here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Thank you guys for much checking out the video. I do greatly appreciate it. And before we get into the video, I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's cool. No need to get triggered. Hope you just have a fantastic day. But anyways, I want to share with you guys my updated test to sense or to test sensor latency between two different mice because it is something that I've been very passionate about to see if there is a real world difference between sensors, which I did figure out that there is. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, most sensors, most sensors from high quality mice are pretty much the same as far as reaction time. It's not anything you're really going to notice and it's probably the weight of the mouse or maybe the feel of the mouse that's going to throw you off more than anything. Um, it could also be that the mouse itself might be using some sort of low quality solder or there's something in it that might not be up to the quality of another mouse that could cause inconsistency. So that's something that I'm still kind of trying to work out when it comes to this test. But for the most part, I think it's a very viable solution to see if there are latency issues and as well as possibly seeing some quirks when it comes to certain mice, which I'll kind of show you guys a little bit in this video. So I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try to shorten up as much as possible without too much rambling like I'm doing now in the beginning of the video. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into showing you guys what exactly I do for this test. So here we are. This is version 2.0 of my mouse sensor input latency tester as well as a click latency tester. Uh, this setup is able to test the latency between the sensors of two different mice as well as the click latencies between two different mice. So it's something pretty cool. And this has been revamped from the previous version of the test. As you can see, I no longer need a thousand FPS camera to measure the times between two LEDs light up. Now it's streamlined with a center Arduino that is basically programmed to receive a signal from one or the other and then measure the difference down to the 0.100th millisecond of when it received the signal. So it's a pretty cool setup. I'll just turn it on and show you now. So, and I also have it hooked up to the same power strip. So they all turn on at the same time, which is something I discovered you need to do. If you have them turn on at separate times, it's gonna throw off the numbers. But then now that I have it hooked up to a single power strip, it, ha it provides me consistent results. So that is something that I also learned that I had to do. So anyways, just to kind of do a quick test. So I'm on the left here. I have a Steel Series Rival 300 hooked up to Arduino Red, and on the right here I have a Logitech G403 hooked up to Arduino Green. And if I press this and then I press this, it's able to tell me that two was faster than three by 13 uh, 1378.60 milliseconds. So as you can see, not just the millisecond anymore. But now I could test down to the hundredth of a millisecond, which is something I'm pretty excited about, even though that is completely unnecessary when it comes to testing a sensor. If anything is less than a millisecond, no one is ever going to notice. Hell, I don't even think people are going to notice two milliseconds. But it's there for our, I guess, I don't know, just for our consumption. And it is pretty cool just to be able to test things down to this degree. So I'm pretty excited about it. And if I hit reset and I press this one and then I press this, it tells me that three was faster than two by 14, whatever, uh, 1400 milliseconds. So it is a test that works. And so in order to test these sensors, what I basically do is let me get these mouse or mice close together. And then I will basically hold this with my hand very sturdily and then press the reset. And once I see ready, I will move the mice. And as long as they move together, I will get the consistent results each time. Now, sometimes depending on how I move it, I might twist slightly or I might bump something and it's not gonna give me an actual number. And that's fine because the way that I'm able to do this test, I can test it, test it, test it, test it over and over and over again to make sure I get consistent numbers. And if I start getting numbers that are throwing off or numbers that aren't really there, then I can understand that, you know, like that, that might not be an accurate number. And the longer you sit here and do this and hell, even if you just, you know, take a few hours off, come back to it and you keep doing it, as long as you get the consistent numbers, then that's basically the, you know, the values or the test results. So if we press reset, move it, it told me that three was faster than two by 0.53 milliseconds. If I reset it again, so right there, it says two was faster than three by 9.44. That I determined to be an inaccurate result. It's just basically I didn't move these at the same time. And if I reset it, 
See now it's back down to three was faster than two by 0.57 milliseconds. And the more I do this, the more a number like this will show up, especially between these two mice, because the sensors of these two mice, even though they're different, this is a 3310 and this is a 3366, um, the latency between the two are negligible. Um, the only real thing I've determined to really be a factor is the weight of the mice will kind of add an inertia that might feel a little bit more sluggish. But as far as this test goes, that's pretty accurate. Let me just do it again to demonstrate. As you see, it kind of throws off the number again. So there we go. So three are, was faster than two by 0.64. Another weird number. There we go. Three was faster than two by 0.66. Three was faster than two by 0.67. Three was faster than two by 0.68. So as you can see, like you can get consistent results, just sometimes numbers will kind of throw out just because of the way I'm testing this, but I'm able to get accurate numbers. And as you can see that this number kept rising, that's just due to the crystal desync or crystal off sync. Um, basically the same thing on why your cell phone, if you don't update it once a day, it will throw off the time. It won't be able to keep a consistent time. And that's basically what's happening with these Arduinos. And when programming these Arduinos, these Arduinos are lined with the same code. The same code was used when programming these Arduinos. It's just Arduino green happens to be 0.3 some milliseconds faster than Arduino red. It's just another quirk with the test that you have to keep in mind. So when I did this test, I made sure that I used two Logitech mice that are the absolute same with the same sensor. I used a Logitech G403 as well as a Logitech G Pro, same sensor. Um, and then I just moved them and I was able to get the numbers to kind of see the difference between the two Arduinos. And then once I got that calibrated, I basically was able to swap out different mice and see if it was gonna change those numbers. And I can see the Rival 300 is basically on par with the G403 as far as latency. And one of the things that I had to do to overcome that drift is another thing that I noticed if I, let's say I reset this Arduino now, and then I reset this one, I'm resetting them at different times. So now they're not gonna be completely synced. And if I redo this test, I'm just gonna hit reset. Move. So that might be an odd number. So 2.11. Uh, 7.88. 2.12. Uh, 7.85, 2.14. So as you can see, the numbers aren't consistent to what I was just having, and that was definitely not enough time for it to desync that much. Uh, to have it desync by two point whatever milliseconds would take about, you know, probably like at least an hour. Um, if you leave this on, the longer you do it, it's gonna desync more, uh, probably longer than an hour, I'm not sure. But uh, it definitely takes longer than that. So if I turn everything off and then I turn it back on and then redo the test, as we can see, the test will go back to where it should be. And that's the difference between the two Arduinos is, you know, 0.28 milliseconds is what I tested. I basically did it 10 times in order to get an average. And then I divided it and then found that it was 2.0 or 0.28. Sometimes it will drift from like 0.25, sometimes to 0.3 but 0.28 is where I determined was the difference as at right now between the two Arduinos. If I hook it up to the computer, reprogram them or re-put in the code, it could change that number. So that's something to also keep in mind when I'm doing the test, basically just a mental note for me, but this test does work and that's kind of how I've been going. And also depending on the mouse, um, the different mice will do different things. So next up, let's swap out the mouse. All right, so now I have the Steel Series Rival 300 to compare against the Zowie EC1A. And the EC1A is considered to be one of the top performing mice. But something that I found interesting with the EC1A is depending on if you're turning it along the X axis or the Y axis will affect the response time of it um, with a sensor, which I thought was truly interesting. So just to kind of show you guys, I have the two mice on, reset. So along the X axis, 
three was faster than two by 0.233 milliseconds. So because that the green was faster than red by 0.28 by default, you have to subtract 0.28 from this number. So basically comes down to two milliseconds. So the Zowie is faster than the Lodge or Zowie is faster than the Steel Series by two milliseconds along the X axis here. So we'll just do it again. So as you can see, same number, do it again. Same number, so I'm getting consistent results with this. All right, so now I'm going to face these mice or these two mice butt to butt so that I can try to accurately measure the Y axis delay time. So basically the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to put these two mice on the table with enough slack so that the cord won't cause any interruptions and I'm going to place the two mice together so that they're completely touching. And then I'm going to reset it. And then I'm just gonna basically tap on one and then it should move the other at the same time. So as you can see, two was faster than three by 7.52 milliseconds. And since this was slower than this one by 2.28, I have to add that. So it basically comes down to close to eight milliseconds that the lot of the steer series was faster than the Zowie along the Y axis. And if we just do it again, make sure that they're butt to butt. All right, and then reset. As we can see, two is faster than three by the same amount. And then just to show you once again, I'm gonna go along the X axis here. So hold them. So 2.56, and as you can see, the number is increasing just due to that drift. Um, so the mouse is able, so like the sensor of the Zowie is not right. Like it's faster along the X axis, which might be good for games you only need to move horizontally. But when it comes to the, you know, the, the vertical axis, uh, it definitely restricts your time, but that difference, that's like a 10 millisecond difference from the X axis to the Y axis that the Zowie is performing. It's not like a one-to-one, -one like most of the other mice I tested. It's just something I found similar or found specifically with the Zowie so far. Um, this is to do with the EC1 way, as well as the FK1 that I own. It's the exact same. And both of these mice, if I hook both of those up, they perform the same. There is no difference between them except for like the 0.28 variants. Um, they're the same sensor, same everything, they perform the same. And then when I hook it up to a Steel Series or a Logitech, um, you can see that the variances of these are definitely different because, I don't know, just the most of the mice I have will perform the same along the X or Y axis, but the Zowies do something weird, do a little something funny where it doesn't give you the same feeling each time. So it's something else that I discovered when it comes to mouse sensors that I thought was kind of quirky. And one of the things I really do love is that these two mice, when I'm testing, I keep getting the same numbers over and over again. So I feel that the response times of these two mice are basically there where it's not gonna do something funny, where if I hook up the Steel Series to something else, sometimes the results kind of vary. So I'm kind of still determining if it could just be the difference in manufacturers is just like on different tempos or for what I, for what I can tell or if it's something to do with the mouse, because not each mouse is gonna be the same. Some will be constructed with possibly lesser quality parts that will throw off the signals and cause some sort of jitter that could throw off these numbers. Especially when I get numbers that aren't consistent, they are consistently inconsistent. So it could be three milliseconds one second, then 10 milliseconds the other, then three, then 10, then three, then 10. So that is something that kind of alarms me when it comes to some of the mice. Uh, but for the most part, I'm able to get actual numbers where I can test things out and, you know, actually display a proper test. So, but that is something I found really interesting with the Zowie. All right, so there we are. That's the test that I have in order to test out mouse sensor latencies as well as click latencies because I figured I should use the same test when I'm doing that instead of using that program from Bloody that I used in the previous video. Um, this does provide me with different results. But I kind of trust these results a little bit more um, just because I had more hardware control over what's going on instead of an like a program that just did something. This is more 
like a very controlled setup. I have two separate computer systems, two Arduinos that just send a signal when they receive it. And the coding is the exact same. Um, it's very minimalistic and it provides results that are consistent. So I think that I'm gonna kind of use this as my main tester from now on for future mice as well. And talking about future mice, I do have some future mice I need to review. I have to review the Logitech G403, wired and wireless. I have to review the G900. Um, the, G, the final mouse scream one, um, like all mice that I purchased myself. Now I do have a few mice that I've gotten for free to review on my channel, which I have been putting off for about three months because I was just so focused on this test. And now that we have it working and, you know, pretty solid results, I have to say that now I could start going through those mice and reviewing them for you guys. And then after I'm done with those reviews, I'm going to post out a video where I'm going to show you guys the actual results when it comes to all the mice that I currently own. And then I'll keep updating this list with every mouse review from now into the future. Um, basically just showing you possibly like the top five when it comes to sensor latency, um, top five when it comes to click latency, and then compare that with the weights of the mouse. Because when it comes to a mouse performance, I think the three things that really play in the factor into it is the click latency, the sensor or the la sensor latency, the click latency of the mouse, and then the weight. The weight can also throw off your aim because the heavier the mouse is, the more inertia you have to overcome in order to control that, which just kind of creates physical latency. So there's sensor latency, click latency, and then physical latency associated with the mouse itself and the weight. So when I'm doing reviews, I think I'm gonna start off a video with those three things. And then at the last part of it, I'm gonna go over my opinions of what I think of the mouse. So I think that'll be a lot more interesting of a review, especially to show if there's any weird quirks I was able to find with this actual test when it comes to that sensor, like the Zowie EC1A or Zowie FK1, compared to all the other mice. It just has a weird quirk. Um, so I, I don't know, I just, I just think this is super cool. So let me know what you guys think again in the comment section below. Um, I think this will definitely revamp and kind of up the game when it comes to mouse reviews. And it's not going to be something boring and stupid where I just regurgitate a bunch of stupid information that you could read on the website. So that's where I stand. So thank you for watching. And once again, hope you guys have a Merry Christmas or a fantastic day. All right. Bye.